All right, today we're gonna to make a video because we get this question asked more than any other question we get. How do you know it's a chubatensis and not a megalodon? How do you know it's a chubatensis, not an angustitis? Chubatensis teeth are very, very, very similar to other species like angustitis and megalodon. What you've got to look for is most importantly the age, but I'm gonna go through some different ages of chubatensis, show you some examples so you can see how widely they, they can vary. These teeth here, for example, are all from Peru. These are some of the earliest examples we have of chubatensis between 18 and 20 million years old on average here. You can see that they, some will have nice cusps here, just look like just like angustitis almost. Some have more cusps, more like a chubatensis. And some here, you can see, don't even really have cusps at all. But they're all the same species, they're all the same location and age. There's just a lot of variety in these teeth. So we're going to go through some examples from different locations and show you some examples, tell you a little bit more throughout this video about what you should be looking for. Here are Chubatensis out of the Middle Miocene uh, Pungo River Formation in Aurora, North Carolina. Uh, these are like 13 to 15 million years old. These are probably the classic Chubatensis that you see uh, on the market, maybe you're, what you're used to seeing. Look at these two teeth. The, the, the differences in these are enormous. You got this upper tooth here, big pronounced cusps. Um, you know, sharp serrations, tip, uh, that black line. But look at the lower here. You got this tooth that doesn't really have any cusp on it at all. You'd be hard pressed to know that's a tubatensis if you didn't know where it came from. So again, we're gonna stress this throughout the video. Formation and age is the main identifier for tubatensis teeth. This group of tubatensis here is all from the middle Miocene, say roughly, you know, 10, 11 to 13, 14 million year old Calvert formation in Maryland. You can see that they have little hints of cusps on them. Some of them do, again, you got this tooth, hardly any cusp at all, but this is what it is. It's a tubatensis tooth. And uh, it's kind of what you get for this age. You could have cusps, you could not have cusps. Um, this little lateral tooth here, You'll see it's really well-defined cusps, but this is exactly the same location as the other ones. So every tooth position in the tubatensis could, could, get, could have something different in it, a different side cusp, different look. You just gotta know where they're from. All right, Bone Valley. Uh, you think of Bone Valley, you think of Megalodon, but there's a little bit earlier deposit there, which is kind of that late, mid to late Miocene, probably, I'd guess 10 million years old, eight to 10, something like that. The tubatensis here sometimes you'll see that they do have little cusp on them. But much, much more often than not, what you're gonna get is something with just a, a little bit of a different look to it, a little slightly different shape there, little hints of where the cusps used to be. Or maybe you might get a, a root that looks like this, it's kind of curled under. That's kind of a, a, another trait of that you see on most chubatensis that you don't really get on, on megalodon teeth. All right, next up in age, we've got these teeth from Southern Europe. They're about you know, 15, 16 million years old. Uh, these are tubatensis as well, but if you look closely at them, they, you know, they don't really have those cusps that like you look to look at with tubatensis. Most of these teeth have very, very minor, very minor cusp at this age. Um, but you know, it's, a, it's definitely something different that you can tell is not a normal tooth. But these are tubatensis from Southern Europe. And now we come to the main main teeth that give us all these questions all the time. How do you know this is a chubatensis? These are all South Carolina teeth. These are very mid to late Miocene, probably eight to 10 million at, at the absolute latest. You'll see a ton of variation in these teeth here. This one kind of looks like a normal chubatensis. You can see kind of hints of cusps, uh, just a little bit different shape overall. Little part of the root there overhanging. Then you get to this one and we get, why is this chubatensis? This is out of the same exact formation. This is uh, that, that age, and that's just what you gotta go for. It's got a little bit larger serrations, a little bit narrower borelette, and the enamel goes all the way up to the root on the uh, front of the tooth, and that's one of the things you're gonna keep, be key to look for. But most importantly, this is out of that, that mid to late Miocene formation. When they get larger, like this one, it's really, really difficult to tell. Why is that a chubatensis? This is a four and a half inch tooth. Why is this a chubatensis and not a meg? Well, take a look at the really, really large serrations on this. Really large serrations go up to the root. There's a little bit of that root overhang here. Flip it over on the, on the front of the tooth. That enamel goes all the way up to the, to the root in that center. That's a, a key uh, definer for this species. 
And again, this is just out of that formation. So this is how you tell. And you can get even larger, they get even harder to tell. This one here is a monster tooth, probably 5.2, uh, 5.3 inches, a huge tubatensis. Again, out of that mid to late Miocene formation. But take a look at the root here. See these little overhangs on the root? And on this side too. This is a very uh, telltale sign of a, of a very late Miocene uh, tooth. Uh, large restorations on average, but when you look at this, enamel goes all the way up. A little bit different shape of the root here. A little uh, different texture to the root. So these are just what you look for, and it's really hard if you haven't seen thousands of these teeth to, to know what you're looking for. But this is something you just got to look for and you got to understand with these. Uh, the key takeaway to Tubitensis versus Megalodon is just know the age. Some of these, should, could you call them Megalodon? Sure, you could. But if you're going to call one a Tubitensis, like say that you're going to call this a Tubitensis, you can't have a Megalodon in the same formation. It's the same exact two, same species. So it's just the way it is. You have to delineate somewhere, and this is where we do it. Hopefully this was helpful for you guys, and uh, you know, good luck collecting. We enjoy uh, dealing with you every time.